So Extreme Rules is live this Sunday on the WWE Network, and can't you hear the excitement in my voice? Ah, whatevs. Hey, but I've got some good news, depending on your perspective, maybe some bad news or some who gives a shit news. But either way, it's newsworthy nonetheless, in this dude's opinion. I will be watching Extreme Rules live on Sunday, and then afterwards bringing my funky little pasty butt on here to review the show. Like we all love me to do. Like it's the good old days once again. Hopefully we can have some fun with that. But anyways, Extreme Rules Sunday. It's so extreme where the majority of the show does not have extreme match stipulations. What are you going to do? Maybe you don't have to go with every single match being an Extreme Rules match. That's okay. But maybe more than two of them. Just saying. You look at the show, though. Kickoff show. You got Sin Cara taking on Andrade Cien Almas. Wish I could take on Selena Vega. But nonetheless, it's like ADR versus Rey Mysterio, but the lamer and much more retarded version, the 2018 style one. It's like they look at... Andrade Cien Almas, and they say, hey, how do we get the Mexican guy over? Let's feud him with another Mexican, because that works so well for ADR, right? Ah, That's about all I got to say about that. Then you've actually got an extreme stipulation match, New Day versus Sanity in a tables match. That's right, you're the New Day, you're in a tables match, and you've been relegated to the kickoff show. Extreme Rules match on an Extreme Rules pay-per-view you're one of the hottest groups in terms of popularity in the company. You're merch movers, you're a popular act, and you get rewarded by having to sit there and do a tables match on the kickoff show. And repeat that. A kickoff match on the pre-show. Because by God, don't you know, that sounded almost Canadian, eh? You got to get to the main card because you've just got to have Finn Balor take on Constable Corbin. Like, this match sounds all many levels of gay. Seinfeld disclaimer, not that there's anything wrong with that. But Finn Balor versus, I didn't realize this was a thing. It shows you how little I've been watching over the past several weeks. Constable Corbin. The dude's cut his hair, and now apparently he's pursuing his man. And Finn Balor, Finny the Twink, is all too glad to oblige. The fuck else am I really supposed to say about this? No extreme stipulation. Finn Balor versus Constable Corbin. Let me repeat that again. Finn Balor versus Constable Corbin. Like, how is this a thing? Seriously. How is this a thing? I don't know. Let's see, your mid-card championships on the show, because of course, everybody's got to have a fucking title. It's like fourth grade field day, everybody gets something. United States Championship match. Nut smashing Shinsuke Nakamura, defending or taking on, excuse me, whatever, who cares? Jeff Hardy, who is the champion currently. So this ends with a low blow, right? All right, moving on. The Intercontinental Championship match. Seth Rollins has a mid-card title shot on a pay-per-view. Okay, it's an Iron Man match. We, we can do that. 30-minute Iron Man match. You can classify that as an extreme rules type of stipulation. And he's taking on... <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! All of these years later, and he's still doing the same damn thing. 30 minutes of having to watch the suspect sissy makes me want to go to fucking sleep. This is the perfect opportunity for all of you somewhere, hopefully in the middle of the damn show, to go get your piss, shit, smoke, snack breaks, and or spank bank opportunities all taken care of. And it's 30 minutes, so you got plenty of time. You can do most, if not all of that. Some of you freaky fuckers probably shit and beat it at the same time. They're like, oh, the spank bag's twice as good. I can feel it against my prostate, you sick fox. Um, what else am I supposed to say? Seth Rollins better win. God. We're still doing this Dolph Ziggler thing. We're still 
having him be a mid-card champion. We're still sucking up people like Seth Rollins into the vortex of suck that is Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Moving on. Again, you've got to have not one but two tag team championship matches on this show. And last I checked, neither one of them are actually Extreme Rules stipulation matches. Because the tag team match that is is on the damn kickoff show! Raw Tag Team Championship. BT for the win! <laughs> Curtis Axel is hitting the gym about as much as I am these days. That deserves to be rewarded. I have nothing else to say about this. The SmackDown Tag Team Championship... Team Hell No. How about Team Hell No to the Bludgeon Brothers being stupid tag team champions? Have Hell No win the damn straps here. You can drop them right back on television in a couple of weeks or on the next show. Bludgeon Brothers as tag champions. Just sound stupid, look stupid, and guess what? Most importantly of all, is stupid! And, again, double your pleasure, double your fun! This fucking thing should be... Sponsored by Double Mint Gum. You got two women's championship matches. Asuka taking on Carmella. Asuka wins this match, right? Right? Or, or help me understand this. Is that they fired James Ellsworth, Ellsworth a while ago just to basically bring him back into the role that he should never have been taken out of in the first damn place. Now, is he like getting a bird's eye view? Uh, who gives a shit? I don't care about this match. Raw Women's Championship. It's an Extreme Rules match. You don't get a lot of those on this show. Nia Jax, Alexa Bliss. Now, logic would indicate that you would have somebody like Ronda Rousey come out and interfere and cost Bliss the title. We're talking about WWE, so for all the fuck we know, they'll still sit there and find a way to have Alexa Bliss win and then have Ronda Rousey come out afterwards, which makes the whole thing look stupid, ridiculous, and one big circle jerk. This is hashtag WWE ruins everything. Because they did the whole crap of having Nia be the champion just so that way Alexa could get the money in the bank, just so that way she could cash immediately in, just so that way it was like all of that other crap was just one gigantic waste of time. Yeehaw, whipty skip, skipty woo, and all that other crap. <clears throat> Moving on. Your two, I guess you would say, featured matches on this show, they're going to be Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley and Rusev versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. Now, of course, it's Extreme Rules. You've got a world title match on your card. You can't have two of those because Brock Lesnar can't be bothered. But the WWE Championship match is not an Extreme Rules match because things, reasons, whatever. But Rusev, AJ Styles. I'm looking forward to this match. There are two matches that I care about on this show, and this is most certainly one of them. I can hold on to my delusion, my desire, to have Rusev have his moment in the sun, and for all of us to be able to celebrate Rusev Day. But more than likely than not, that's not happening. But this is a big spot for Rusev. This is a big moment for Rusev. And this is a real chance for him to show that he belongs at a higher level in WWE. And I'm excited for him for that. And with AJ Styles, you know, if your name's not Shinsuke Nakamura, he can go out there and have a pretty good match with you on a pay-per-view. So I would expect this damn thing to be really, really good. And I'm okay also with them having AJ keep the strap. Because you've already got him with a relatively lengthy or starting to be lengthy title reign. You might as well continue to build upon that. But does anybody think that this match is going to main event? I haven't been reading or anything, so I don't know. But I'm assuming the main event is going to be Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. And if that's the case, so be it. Especially since the WWE Championship match, as of this recording, does not have a special stipulation. Especially because there very likely won't be a title change. I am perfectly fine with Reigns and Lashley facing each other with the understanding that might be a number one contenders match by default to face Lesnar at SummerSlam. And it's going to be really interesting where they want to go with this. If they want to go with Reigns being the guy and being the one and going back to what the hell they wanted to do to begin with, then Reigns has to win this match and look like a million bucks and you move on to fucking SummerSlam. It's that simple. 
But if you want to play up the whole Daniel Cormier, Brock Lesnar thing, you want to play up Brock in UFC, you want to play up Brock in the mixed martial arts background, then Bobby Lashley has to win. That's the way it has to be. If your concern is about establishing the guy, then Roman Reigns has to win. But then he really doesn't because you go with Lashley here, you have him face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. God forbid a guy could only dream that Lashley would actually beat Brock Lesnar. And now you have a reason for Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley to have business after SummerSlam that can go all the way through to Survivor Series and most of the rest of 2018. That's the way good business is done. That's the way this should be done. I don't know what direction they're going to go, but it also seems like a massive leap to go from Bobby Lashley sitting there feuding with Sami Zayn, the fucking Uber driver, to now beating Roman Reigns with the opportunity to beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam and end that ungodly stupid reign once and for freaking all. Or the company could have Lashley win, lose at SummerSlam, just so that way Roman looks like the conquering hero when he eventually beats fucking Brock Lesnar. Bobby Lashley seems like the much, much lesser of two evils at this point. But if Reigns is your guy, then do not fuck around. Do not fuck around, because you can still have reason for Lashley and Reigns to have business after SummerSlam. If Reigns wins, and then he beats Lesnar at SummerSlam. At this point in time, though, Lesnar might be carrying that strap to Survivor Series and beyond. And if he is, then maybe it does make more sense for Lashley to freaking win here because they won't feel so bad at SummerSlam serving him up to lose to Lesnar. I could dream about a black man in the main event of SummerSlam, damn it. Do not take that away from me. Do not. Give me a reason to cuck, okay? Anyways. Two matches I really care about. The rest of them, not so much. Maybe a couple of them jump up and bite me in the ass and surprise me. But if they don't, they don't. If anything, I feel a little bit refreshed because I haven't been able to watch all that much over the past couple of months. So I'll be going into this with a little bit of a fresher perspective. Uh, I say all that, and then I'll probably still come on here and largely crap on the show Sunday. But that's what's going to happen. And if you don't know that, dealing with me by now, then I don't know what to tell you. Remember, remember, OTR Essential was, is, and always will be not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.